Um, I want to play a clip from my, my, one of my favourite people, Kamala Harris. Not for the reason she would like to be one of my favourite people. She appeared on The View today, um, which, by the way, how annoying is The View getting? God, they're insufferable, that lot, aren't they? Um, right. It's just a, side, just a side effect. But she told Joy Behar that she's scared as heck and we should all be scared about the prospect of Donald Trump getting re-elected by... And let's see what she said here. This is by who? Watch this. Are you scared, first of all, what could happen if Trump ever became, God forbid, president again? And what are you going to do to stop the crazies? I am scared as heck. <laughs> Yeah. Which is why I'm traveling our country. You know, there's an old saying that there are only two ways to run mm. for office, either without an opponent or scared. So on all of those points, yes, we should all be scared. And no attempt to correct Joy Behar, uh, Taurus, when she uses that phrase, crazies, about people who may support Trump. This reminded me of Hillary Clinton with her basket of deplorables jibe no. about what is, in reality, tens of millions of Americans. Listen, uh... You can't compare it to Hillary Clinton because Hillary made a concise, direct argument. Whether you agree with her or not, she was pretty clear when she spoke. I still have no idea <laughs> what Auntie Kamala just said. And I know it's early, but I was hoping the wine wouldn't be served after the interview. <laughs> That was a loaded question that was pre-approved. Mm. So when you're not, and Kat, we, on the Gutfeld show, we bring this up quite a bit. Yeah. When you don't have anything to run on that you want to discuss mm. because you might get off on a tangent or not know what you're talking about, you and I have discussed this, feelings. Yeah. You can discuss feelings. I'm afraid, so I can't be wrong. No one can argue with Auntie Kamala that she's afraid. Mm. And even though you'll say, but you are the VP and you have the top five armies in the world and you're afraid of a little old man with orangish red hair comb over, why would you be afraid of him? What, is he, what did he do to you? Like, this is the VP of the United States of America and she's afraid. No, this is the talking point. I mean, can't we... no substance. So what do you do for schools? We need to do this. Nothing, no, nothing. I'm afraid, I'm afraid, I'm afraid. Uh, you know, in the UK, we're panicking now that we may end up with King Harry if we're not if we're not very lucky. Um, you could end up, you know, a heartbeat away, famously from potentially President Harris. Yeah. <laughs> Your thoughts on that prospect potentially? I think that when I think about what concerns me the most, it actually would be the exact kind of rhetoric that we heard on that show, right? Because. When we talk about people, oh, the crazies, mm. then you're reducing these people to this. You pit people against each other. Everybody loses. The only group that doesn't lose is the members of the government, yeah. right? Because if you're voting against the other side because they're evil, then that motivates people to vote for you. But also, when you turn people against each other, it convinces people to willingly give up their own rights for mm. sake of this evil other. We saw a lot of this, especially since Trump enters po has entered politics, and I, and I really fear that it's going to get a lot worse in terms of us willingly hating each other based on preconceived notions that someone else who doesn't know you or care about you or your relationships has told you to think. I think that's so true. The, the, langu the demonizing language on both sides, actually, has really ratcheted up. A civilized debate between politicians or about politicians is, is just disappeared. Yeah, I watched the interview and I actually thought Kamala did a skillful job in avoiding uh, bombs that were set out for her by The View, whether intentionally or not. I don't agree with you that she should have said something about the crazies because what I heard from Joy Behar, who also wasn't very coherent there, I thought she was talking about Trump and his team mm. as being the crazies rather than the Trump voters. As he says, I don't think you can compare it to Hillary Clinton's direct insult. Trump voters are a basket of deplorables. Mm. That may or may not have been a reference to Trump voters as opposed to the campaign. Who knows? She didn't say anything negative about them. She was also asked if she agreed with Nikki Haley that America had never been a racist country. And she skillfully, I thought, avoided saying, yes, America has been racist. She totally avoided that. It was a little bit word salad. But her job now is, at the moment, her job is not to mess up. And I think... In the campaign trail, what you will see Kamala Harris concentrating on is the one really big winning issue that the Democrats have, which is abortion. There are a lot of women voters, even GOP women mm. voters, who are mad as hell about Roe versus Wade going away. doesn't matter what you think about it. It's a huge election winner for the Democrats, and that's what Kamala, as the woman in the White House, will be concentrating on. Well, thank you, Pat. That was obviously brilliant, because you're a brilliant pack. I appreciate it.